day is it? Wednesday? Hump day? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice run. Oh, a little brisk out here. <laughs> so when you live on the north side of a hill and your backyard faces north, you don't get too much in the way of sunshine this time of year. Maybe in the middle of the day. I think it's time to mow the lawn. <laughs> this is all natural. It's just been raining and raining. Where's the sun? Can I even see the sun anymore? Oh, it's sad, isn't it? It's there, though. There's sunshine and there's a fresh breeze. Uh, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can uh, do this magic focus with the waning corn moon and old glory just showing off September's finest. It was quite the day yesterday. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a few minutes. Talk about right now the front that caused yesterday's weather, which was dramatically different than the forecast, <laughs> is now moving to the east. And, oh boy, <laughs> I chased yesterday. We'll talk about it. Let's go to our rain gauge first, though. <laughs> Purple rain, point two, one. I don't know why it's purple. A bird must have helped me out with that. That's all I can think. And the temperature outside is 61 degrees. I gotta try and get out of the wind here so we can talk about the weather. Let's get down here. I did some trimming and we'll sit right down here and look at those boats and talk about low pressure still impacting Maine. It's raining this morning and that low is strengthening as it moves up the St. Lawrence River Valley. So there is a, another front. We talk about this all the time. There's a cold front, then there's a colder front coming in this afternoon with a chance of a few showers in northern New England. Uh, for southern New England, we'll just see some cumulus clouds mix in. It's a fairly breezy day from the west and the northwest. And I think they're still racing the sailboats here on Hingham Bay, the fall twilight series and we are going to be gusting close to 30 miles an hour from the west to northwest and because that low is strengthening the wind is not really going to die down tonight maybe away from the beaches the wind will die down but it's going to stay windy and that'll keep us a little warmer near the shore if you go to the map let's go fast forward to friday it's the third friday in a row with high pressure from canada coming in but this friday it's a little different note it's divided uh, the front has a, a warm front kind of coming right through it and that low pressure system in Minnesota is actually going to zip along and come across northern New England Saturday night and Sunday and that adds a little bit of a monkey wrench to the Sunday forecast and it looks like watch the, the GFS guidance here it looks beautiful Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday with the sunshine a few clouds mixed in and then on Sunday the temperature is near 80 in the middle of the day and then all of a sudden it's 63 in the evening because the wind shifts and comes in from the northeast that's a backdoor cold front and so that's going to be an issue for later for Sunday perhaps it might turn cooler especially in central and northern New England with showers coming along too so there is going to be some rain in New England on our weekend including the mountains so you're thinking about camping this weekend in the higher mountains there will be some uh, showers maybe even a thunderstorm on Saturday night into Sunday and then it turns much cooler and once again it looks like on monday and tuesday same schedule here comes uh the rain monday and tuesday next week and <laughs> i said this last week too it does not look like a, a good enough boundary to ring out inches of rain yet that's what happened in the last two days and yesterday was just what a disastrous forecast and the short range guidance said oh maybe three inches of rain near taunton whenever you see that short range guidance with that kind of the rain you can't say yes that's where it's going to happen it's probably going to happen but probably not where it says it's going to happen so yesterday martha's vineyard which was forecast to get zero got 2.8 so i'm gonna i had a very busy day yesterday i was on around the cape and i did some chasing it was all about water first we were testing the water in bass river then one of my teammates in the testing program asked me a really good question could there be a tornado on Cape Cod today? And I said, well, it's not out of the question. There were some hook echoes, and we chased to Harwich. And then I got a great tour of Cape Cod wind and weather. And that's what it was all day yesterday, Cape Cod wind and weather. I'll let you go now. Well, <laughs> the in more part's pretty long. So I just showed you the radar. And what was the question you just asked me? Could we have a tornado on Cape Cod? <laughs> it is that kind of feel, isn't it? And there is a triple point low, like that day we did have those tornadoes. So uh, if it happens, you're to prophecy. <coughs> Anyhow, the radar is pretty <coughs> overwhelming right now, so we'll see what happens. The guidance had zero rain for Cape Cod today, but I had that for yesterday too, and we got practically a half inch. 
good for all you guys that are growing lawns. <laughs> good for the aquifer. Been up this way in a while. Anyone remember where Bank Street is? Is there a bank at Bank Street? I think this is it. Take a right at Heather's Airport. At the FedEx truck. Good chance this is Bank Street. Nantucket Sound is full of lightning, thunder, and downpours right now. Hey, where are you going? Going to Thompson's Clam Bar. Because that's where the tastiest clams are. Is the seafood good? Oh, it's the best by far. Load up the car and let's go to Thompson's Clam Bar. I don't think we're invited in there anymore. It used to be right in there. Times have changed around here, haven't they? Well, we made it this far. I might as well go look and see what what we used to know as Thompson Clam Bar looks like now. It's a good sized puddle there. Downpour has just ended. Oh, they keep the yachts here now. Wow, the water is very high. Both the rainwater and seawater. Yeah. And that's what Thompson's Clam Bar was when we were kids. Seagulls would pull right up and uh, sit on the pier and you could hand them french fries. Now you get a shooting star from Palm Beach. Every day is a boating day. Oops, sorry. Peggy B2. Alright, let's go back to Wayne. Oh my goodness, I just can't believe how it's changed. So now we're in Harwich. And it feels like Florida. Are we in the eye of the storm? And look where we are. Cape Cod, wind and weather. Okay, we're making one more stop, uh, T-Rex. You mind if we stop one more second? Okay, we're almost home, but we gotta do one thing. We're gonna go into Cape Cod weather and say hello. I have never been here, but the instruments look very familiar. Cape Cod, wind and weather. And it's old school, beautiful stuff for the wall. And look who is here. <laughs> Doug, you know that man? <laughs> There's Don Kit. Oh, there he is. Probably in his office there from Weymouth. And on the wall here. How come we got Don Kent all over the wall? Hey, Blair. How you doing? Good to see you. Tim the Weatherman. Good to see you. From uh, Cape Cod. And maybe I was on a TV station once or <laughs> twice. Yeah, I, I used to watch it pretty religiously. Uh, how long you had this store? Well, this particular location uh, for 12 years, maybe something like that. I think it was 2011, I think we moved here. But I mean, the business started in 1939. Wow. So, and been right here in town. I mean, it started about a mile, mile from here. And was so, Don Ken associated with this business? Not, not Cape Cod winter weather. He, was, he started what became Down Easter winter weather. It was originally Don Kent Weather Instruments, and he sold it in, uh, sometime in the late 70s, I believe, and it became Down Easter at that point. And then Down Easter and Cape Cod actually bought Down Easter about 12 years or so ago. So it's all one company now, but we still have the two lines, the Down Easter and the Cape Cod lines. Neat. And these are the same instruments that my dad put up about 55 years ago, and they're still functioning. <laughs> and are you making them right there in the back office? Yeah, I may have made your files. I've been, next year will be my 50th year here doing this, so. Wow, what's your last name? Uh, Nicola, N-I-K-U-L-A. And my father worked for the company before me, so it's a. 1939. So it's a local grown business. Wow. Where it all happens. Generators. So this is you know, package inventory, stuff ready to, ready to ship. Yeah, so people still buying analog instruments? They're so pretty. Yeah, not enough of them, unfortunately, but yeah, fortunately, there's still some people that appreciate them. So we got all sorts of uh, drill presses, and this is an Arbor press. This thing is older than I am. I'm, you know, I'm 70, and I don't even know how old that is, but it's been around a long time. Still use it. Can generate you know, a huge amount of pressure with that thing. 
And this is a coil winder. It winds, you know, electrical coils with this real fine, hair thin coil that we use in the, the wind speed generators. Right, so essentially what you're doing is you're generating a little uh, electricity with yeah, the... Yeah, it's spinning the, magnet and you know, between the coils and generates a real small Very current. cool, very cool. Increases with the revolutions and speed of the wind. You know, we got a lathe, an old, another old timer, a kick punch. You know, you use your foot to punch out uh, whatever. Although we essentially don't use that anymore. But <clears throat> So you pretty much just start from um, basic pieces of metal to come up with your instruments? Well, I mean, you know, a lot of the parts are made elsewhere. I mean, we're not doing a lot of machine work here. You know, it's, oh, okay. you know we buy we buy the parts and then do all the assembly. You know, the barometer movements come from Germany and oh, uh, you know things like that. So, uh, and then we do all the we do all the assembly here. And so it's not pretty, but it still works. That's gorgeous. Yeah. And uh, those of us that have been watching your instruments for our entire lives really appreciate it. So. I can't believe that we have not met before, so I'm glad. No, as I say, I've been looking forward to it. I'm real good friends with uh, Peter Troll. So. Oh, Peter Troll, yeah. You know Peter. So. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, I took him. He took me out on a boat uh, in Chatham Harbor about 35 years ago, and taught me about uh, you know erosion and all that. And mm -hmm. We're pretty good friends too. Yeah. Yeah. Harbor in Harwich Point, that's where you'll find Thompson's Clam Bar. I don't think we'll bite it in there anymore. I mean, it used to be right in there. Times have changed around here, haven't they? The rain's let up too, so this time it head back north. <laughs> 